Good morning. We're out at the range at Middletown Firearms. Hello, falling out of print. We're on the paper side this morning, so I won't be hitting steel because they're setting up for some steel uh, practice on the other side. But what we're going to be doing this morning, it's a brisk 43 degrees. Okay, you can't see that. But I'm going to be testing a few of the guns I've built. Uh, one I just bought and one that I've had for a while sold and got back because, well, you know what? I realized I really wanted that gun. So I'm set up at about 10 yards this morning and I'm gonna show you what we're going to be testing this morning. But first, let me thank one of the people that sent me something for a review. So I'm sitting here editing this and I realized that the footage didn't come out great for the thank you spot for the people that sent me some items to review. And that is Core. Unironically, I've been wearing this shirt. I like this shirt but I also like the hat. I'm not a huge fan of snapbacks, but I'm waiting for new hats to show up, so in the meantime, groovy. But the core belts, as you can see, they're very much like a regular belt. They look like a normal belt, but they work really well. As you can see, you just do that and you can adjust. They have a ratcheting system, so you can go even tighter if you need to. Put your gun on your hip and you have plenty of room, all that good stuff. They last a very long time. My last belt went over four years of everyday use. I now have three belts so that I can do different days and different belt buckles. This is my 1.75 inch garrison belt. Hold my guns up really easily. So if you go to Core's website and use my link, which will be down in the description, you get a discount on your Core belt purchase. They have belts, belt buckles, gun belts, battle belts, all kinds of cool stuff. So check them out. Tell them I sent you. I'm going to get back to editing this so that you can watch what I'm editing. Baseballs, anybody? Back to it. So you may have seen this one in a shorts I did. This is a para ordinance. You can see by the logo there, as well as the fact that it says focus. Para ordinance right there on the side of it. And this is part of an older kit. This is not a complete gun when it was manufactured new. This came from Canada before Para USA existed, and what they did was they built the frame and then you completed it with whatever parts you wanted. You can even see how rough the finishing is on this gun. Now being a low serial number, I'm not sure if I'm going to refinish it or not. I am going to be changing a few components, and you will also see that I have a Rock Island top on it. This is off of my TAC Ultra, has adjustable sights and a fiber optic front, front and rear slide serrations. I thought it was a nice looking slide. So I figured it would fit with the gun for now until I get my tailored tactical one back from getting cut. Cause I'm gonna turn that into, this is becoming a race style gun. I've got some G10 grips coming. I'm getting a optics cut for my slide. I'm gonna eliminate the front sight completely and I'm gonna put a magwell. So look forward to all those upgrades. Very nice trigger on this. I don't think I showed it in the short, but as you can see, very light, very crisp. Reset is super short, trigger is super light. I think I'm gonna enjoy shooting this. I did pick up an extra magazine and ironically, not ironically, but funny enough, Rock Island produces a double stack 1911 that still uses the same mag pattern as the pair of ordnance. In fact, the magazines are manufactured by Mekdar and as you can see, they say P1445 still on them. That was the code for the 45 four pair of ordnance, so that will be nice. Second gun this morning is my CZ75 SP01 Tactical. I've done a full video on this. Check up there or up there, whichever way it is, for the review. This is a great pistol. I sold it to a buddy of mine, instantly regretted it, so I actually wound up getting it back from him. Cost me another gun, but stuff happens. But I'd actually never shot this. I traded it to him right away, so that will be another gun we're going to be shooting. Practice safe practice, barrels pointed down range with the slides open for safety reasons in case somebody walks around the side of the building and doesn't know. And the third and final gun this morning is going to be my SIG P322 chambered in 22 long rifle. This is not the one I had a year and a half ago. This is a brand new one because I wanted another semi-auto 22. I'm thinking I'm going to also get the TX22 compact at some point, but I wanted this one back. I sold the other one because uh, supply was very limited, so I let them sell my gun, and I bought another one back. Plus, I'm doing suppressors this year, and might as well put a 46M on a 22. That's a joke, of course, but 
I am going to be putting a suppressor on that gun. And I just want to see if it still shoots good. I heard stories about them not running right, so I picked up another one because my old one ran perfect. Be using some PMC bronze for the 45 ACP, and then I have what's left of the box of 22 for the P22, P322, because, well, I'm not shooting a ton today, but I am shooting three guns, so I'm going to be putting uh, 16, 32, 40, 32. I'm trying to do math. Math is not my strong shoot, even though I'm Asian. So I'm going to be putting like 180 rounds down range this morning, so at least you'll get a decent shooting experience. The para ordnance came from Middletown Firearms, so make sure to check them out. If you're looking for a gun, you never know what's going to walk in the door. Uh, they have all kinds of stuff all the time, and I highly encourage you to check them out. The SP-01 came from my buddy's Bears trading post in Winchester. A lot of different places for a lot of my pickups because they're all my friends, so I am non-choosable or choosy when it comes to them. And then the SIG 322 came from Liberty Arms. So again, check all them out. They will all hook you up. And because I'm not shooting rifle, I just use cheap in-ear protection. Works for me. So I'm going to set you up so you can actually see the target this time. And then I guess we'll do a little bit of shooting. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Sorry, something came to mind and I decided to film a quick short. So safety on this model, which I do approve of because if this is going to be your first gun, you do want to have a little bit of extra safety. I shot like five rounds through it, I think, something like that. And so far it's running flawlessly. Trigger on this one is the flat shoe, which I prefer. I like the 90 degree break. Fiber optic front sight, and I'm going to take my jacket off, so hang on a second. Safety on, a little bit better. All right, so for those of you that complain about all my scars, I am working on tattoos this year, getting both arms done. So let's go ahead and keep going. realized I'm missing something. Hang on. Ah, there we go. My eyes have been bugging me lately and I need to go see a doctor because I'm probably going to get LASIK this year as well. So, and that's all thanks to you guys. So let's continue shooting this guy. So they do need to be adjusted a little bit. I'm hitting just a little bit low right, but not too bad. I got to grab another mag. SIG does come with two 20 rounders out of the box. You can get a 25 round magazine. Unfortunately, they are very, very unobtainium right now, but hopefully coming up soon, you'll be able to buy more. And this is actually the holster for my SIG Legion that I actually got rid of, but I may be buying back. So we'll see. Become a member of the channel. Help me keep my guns. Being a 22, there's literally no recoil from this thing. Well, there is a little bit. Failure to feed. That could have been me. Let's see what happens when you hold it right. Yeah, we're good there. So, could be ammo, could be me. I'm using a, a Gila soft nose. And as you can see, it... Uh, kind of bent it, so just didn't want to feed, apparently. Like I said, you guys are the main reason why I'm even able to do this, so thank you guys so much for coming along. I heard all your messages regarding doing some live streams, so we'll be looking into that in the future. I only have 10 rounds left. I left the box at home. So we'll just load this one, I'll run it, and then we'll come back and start the next part. So we're just going to burn through the last 10 rounds. I'll actually aim at the target. About 12 yards. i got to learn to maintain my stance. Ooh, that was stupid. Good strike, no detonation. Crap cartridge. Love 22s, don't you?
Next, we're going to run the CZ SP01. Now we got four mags of mixed ammo. I'm gonna actually shoot my hollow points first. That was a weird noise. And like last time, I'm gonna start at seven yards just to get this thing field in. It does have a decocker, so we'll start it with the decocker in half cock. Here we go. Go up and see how it's printing. When it hits, I'm not afraid to show you. So that was my first shot. That was my second shot. So double action, and then the first single action, I wasn't planning on it, and then the rest, not bad. Obviously, this is upside down. So these are all 10 ring, 9, 9. So seven yards, not too bad. A lot of good grouping. I'm going to go back to 10 now. And yeah, we do have yard markings. So shush. Some of these mags don't drop free, some of them do. Also could be because I have stickers on the back, because I have so many mags, I don't know what goes with what. Not terrible. I have a tendency to walk up when I speed up a little bit, but not terrible. Overall shootability is pretty good. Let's go ahead and grab the 45. So now I'm at seven yards with the para ordnance with the Rock Island top on it. Again, I have no idea if this gun is even going to run, much less how it's going to run. It does chamber, but it did that earlier too. So it's seven yards with this one and I'm just using the target that's still up there because I blew the other one apart so Let's see what happens sorry something just felt weird uh, this is again some random rounds that I had I forgot I had a couple of hollow points that's why you saw a couple of them kick a little bit harder no lock back on the last round. Hello, oh, seven yards. Uh, one flyer up there, but the rest are all right here. 14 rounds. It's not bad. I've done worse. Don't forget to get signed up at Middletown for their range time and training. One thing, say, that I really do like is this big extended slide lock on this one. I'm going to put one of these on my Kimber, I think. Although I'm going to radius the edge, this one's very tight. So, muzzle blast out of a 45. Here we go. Especially when you're an idiot and don't expect how light the trigger is. But so far it seems to be running fine. I'll be honest, I didn't get much sleep and my eyes are a little bit weird right now. If you want to know what my nerve damage does, you can see me shaking. And again, no lock back, but the gun is running. And the answer to where those rounds going is all over. Starting to drizzle, so I'm going to get the last two mags and a few random rounds out before I go home. One thing I do love is that this thing's running great, and that goes to show you how modular 1911s can be. 
Very nice guns. For the last couple mags, we're going to shoot from five yards just because I want to see if it is accurate. Technically six and a half yards. Stop flinching. That's your reason for flinching. Will they ever stop flinching? No. It's starting to rain, what can you do? But Definitely took out the corner of the target, no problem. I'm super impressed with how this thing is running right now. So just gonna finish these off in the center here. I just gotta get used to that trigger. It's super light and then I have to come out here and sight it in properly one of these days. But I was just testing functionality today. So super light. You flinched. So it occurred to me as I was editing this that I haven't done the end of day report for these guns. It is a different day, but I remember what happened. On the 322, we had the two failures, and I'm attributing one to the ammo, which was the failure to fire. Uh, the primer strike was good, but it didn't detonate, or the rim strike was good, and it didn't detonate. The one that got stuck feeding in. That could have been me because I was holding it loose, but it also could have been the ammunition. So no way to know 100% for sure. I'm going to blame the ammo, but other than that, cheap Aguila, soft nose stuff, and it ran fine in here. Decent little gun. I'll probably wind up putting like a 507K on the back because it is cut for an optic. And yeah. So that's that one. Very good. Very nice. Very good. Very nice. Ran well. For a 22 caliber under 400 bucks, you would be hard pressed to do better. The CZ SP01 Tactical. Since I did that video, I did get my new G10 grips for it, and you've seen that in the community tab. This guy runs like a champ. The trigger is very nice, especially in single action mode. I don't run guns even double action, single action in double action because I have no reason to, but this one is nice and smooth should I need to. You also saw in the video how bad I was shaking and the fact that I was like not even really controlling the recoil. I take full responsibility for that. I'm not making excuses. I just, I didn't sleep. I was overtired. I shouldn't have been shooting, but I needed to make the video. And uh, yeah, you can definitely see it in the video because you can see how much movement there was in my arms. Just going to have to deal with that. I was still pretty accurate, even though I was wobbling all over the damn place. And last but not least, we have the para ordnance 1445. As you can see, I put my Taylor's tactical top back on it because this is the top it's going to run when I turn it basically into a race gun. So NC engravers, they do an optics cut for the 407, 507K pattern. And I wanna see if they can either dovetail it so I can put like a Dawson Precision fiber optic front sight on it, or possibly just remove that front sight, only run an optic and then have them flat top it and knurl it. I am also looking for a threaded barrel because I do have my suppressors ordered. So once those start coming in, that would be nice. Although with the ATF and everything going on, I don't get into politics, but with everything that's going on, it might be a year before I get my suppressors. Anywho, shot perfect. I love it. And this is going to be one of my favorite guns. And somehow, even though it is a double stack like the Rock Island, it feels narrower in the hand. So that's it. We're done. As you can see, I'm finishing the edit on this video that you're watching now. So when it's done and up, you'll know this is part of the three a week series for long form. 
come back for more of that. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm starting with the 40 cal TH next week for the long-term test. So you'll get your first 100 and then a 500 round follow-up. So come back for that one. Thank you guys for watching this channel. I really appreciate it. You're helping me keep going. This is a hobby for me. It's not a living for me. But if you guys come along hardcore enough, maybe that'll change. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, I'll talk to you later.